Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Oh, what a show do I have for you today. We have an incredible actor who has got some amazing things to share with us today. He has been a star high school athlete. He's been a lover of theater and acting. And that has pushed this young man into a very colorful life, going from Oklahoma to Massachusetts to Milan, Italy. Oh, yeah. And um, also then on to Los Angeles, California. And you know what that means, right? A lot of us think Hollywood, but, well, acting really is in Los Angeles. There is a lot that goes on in Hollywood, but the hub, mm, we know. We'll even talk about a little bit of that. I have a few little stories of my own. I don't know if we'll even get to it, but we'll see. And um, let's, let me tell you just a little bit more. This university investment banker major, uh -uh, he decided not to follow that path, but to follow his passion, which is something we should do, right? Um, and he wants you to follow yours as well. His journey led him, though, into modeling in Milan. What a special area. In fact, I mean, that's the fashion industry, right? And what a place to do that model. We're going to hear about that. And you'll see, you can see for yourself why. But not, not long in the modeling area, and I mean that both figuratively and little, literally, but he was then chauffeured off into the L.A. scene, oh yeah, where he is hitting the hub of stardom. He's currently doing bartending and managing at one of the most popular nation's uh, nightclubs, oh yeah, and he's going to share a little bit about that with us too. Baker Holleran is with us today who's pursuing his love in acting, and he's known for his roles in well, let's see, Whitey, Street Marts, and most recently on Fox's 911. I want to talk about that. You know why. And especially because his role aligns with my background. He was an LAPD officer in that role. And he's also played the role of a police officer. Oh, yeah, here we go again, which was broadcast on FX. Let's talk to him now. Welcome, Baker. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate all the kind words you said. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited because you have got a background that is absolutely amazing. So do tell. I mean, you started out with this absolute love in sports and theater both. And I'm sure that both of these things have brought you to a point that both, both of these things have helped you in your journey. Yes, I, uh, I grew up, uh, I was born in Oklahoma City, but I moved to Boston when I was about three, and I was always a big Boston sports fan, Celtics, Bruins, Patriots, Red Sox. Uh, my dad and I had a special bond, we would go to all the games, and I was actually active in soccer, ice hockey, and baseball as a kid, and my dad would take me to all the games, and I was going to all the camps, and I, it turned out I was a star athlete, and um, I got into acting as a young kid, I started doing theater and plays as a young kid, honestly, to meet all the girls. And then I fell in love with that. <laughs> yeah, so it kind of worked out. But um, yeah, my two dreams as a kid were to play for the Boston Red Sox or be in the movies. So now I'm pursuing one of those dreams. So I'm very grateful and humbled by it. Yes. That is really very interesting. And see, um, I got into acting because I wanted to do the love scenes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, what, what an opportunity, though, because acting really allows you to um, have this wonderful form of expression in many, many ways that sometimes we don't allow ourselves to do, right? Yeah. So, I mean... This is pretty interesting. And then you also have a modeling side. Yeah, I actually got to, I started modeling in New York City and then I lived in Milan and then in Paris for a little while. Overseas. Okay. And those were two wonderful countries. Uh, 
when I was in Milan, all my friends were Italian. And when I was in Paris, they were all French and Parisian. So I lived the life of a local. I wasn't just a tourist American wandering the streets, but uh, it was a wonderful time to travel and make some money. And, you know, I was a pretty girl, so I, I wasn't complaining. But uh, my passion... <laughs> And in acting. Uh, you know, acting is, it's like an outlet. You can play so many different roles. One week I'm playing an LAPD. The next week I'm an army guy. Then I'm a gangster. Then I'm a lover. I mean, it's, it's like you can play all these different careers within the same year. You know, it's a wonderful experience and it's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it. But uh, I've been able to support myself. Like you said, I'm bar manager at this exclusive nightclub where all the celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio and Drake and Justin Bieber come in and yeah, it keeps my days free for all the auditions and work and acting classes. So it's been a very humbling experience and I feel like I'm on the right track as we speak. So very grateful. Well, let me ask you, is it hard to be working and then still doing acting classes and making all the auditions? Honestly, I don't find it's that hard. My hours are usually about 11 PM till 2 AM, three nights a week. And I'm, I stay up late anyways. I'm always watching movies or reading scripts or TV shows. So, uh, yeah, that's uh -huh. like, I'm kind of a night owl as it is. So, no, it, it really doesn't affect my daily practice of acting. And, um, yeah, so I, I would say it's a great job. Very good. So, let me ask you, what's the most challenging part of, um, you know, getting an audition? Um, well, Luckily now I have a pretty good manager, so she's been getting me some good opportunities lately, but just to get an agent or manager is tough because there's thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of actors. And then each part, the casting director is getting three, 3000 submissions and they're only bringing 30 actors for the part. So just to get the audition okay. is like one in 300 odds. So I've been, I've been very lucky lately. I've had some good auditions last week. I auditioned for the hit show snowfall on FX which is the true story about the crack cocaine epidemic that started in Los Angeles in the 1980s and the CIA was uh -huh. involved in. So that audition went good. I've auditioned for that show a couple of times. And then I shot an episode about three weeks ago on the hit show Fox 911 for Lee, where I played an LAPD officer. And that was quite a nice experience too. So I was very grateful for that opportunity. And uh, I I was really excited about that because I'm a retired police officer and um, – <laughs> yeah, and um, it's so funny because there's a lot of police officers who actually go into acting. It's it's the irony in that is interesting. But at any rate, um, that I will. I just thought that was really interesting that you had done that and also had um, you know a role also in at. Uh, in, in a show on FX as a police officer as well, and I thought, oh, this is, this is going to be fun to talk about because a lot of people. Um, you know, they want to do something in life and there's so many other things that they want to do. And it's really neat as an actor that, like you said, you get to portray all these different things, but you don't have to, you know, do the daily grind of them. And right. so I'm wondering, you know, how was that, um, that stint, that role? Oh, it was wonderful. It was actually a, a straight shooter cop, uh, Whereas the audition I had for Snowfall was like a dirty cop. So it was interesting to see the variations on the two shows. Um, but no, I, I learned a lot watching the stars work and, you know, the directors and all. I mean, there's so many people that go into making a TV show. You think it's just the, uh -huh. and the director, but there's about 30, 40 people behind the scenes. And it was just an honor to be on a set like that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward uh, to the next one. Like, I, I got to play a gangster in the, the Whitey show I shot uh, about Whitey Bulger, the gangster from uh, Boston. So that was a, quite a nice experience. And, um, yeah, so uh, I've been very lucky, very lucky. This is really exciting. Now, being on set, though, a lot of people don't realize that the hours are very long and vary from very early in the morning until late in the evening. Right. Yeah. My call days were usually about from 6 a.m. till at least 6 or 7 p.m. So that right there is a minimum of 12 hour shoot day, you know, uh -huh. and you're not always on set. There's a lot of sitting and waiting around and, you know, in the trailers and whatnot and uh, craft services, seeing what kind of food they have, which is always yes. Nice. <laughs> yes, smorgasbord. I mean, there's always lots of good food available. Yes. You really get chubby there, but it's, uh, it's quite a nice experience. 
Yes, there's there's no um, like mobile track to work off that food either, right? <laughs> Maybe that's the one thing that's lacking. But gosh, and, and it's kind of nice too because you have an opportunity to get to know other people and network while you're there, yeah. and see other and see other actors and actresses in the industry as well. Yeah, no, I agree. And um, if I had a message for you know all the listeners out there, I think today would be never give up on your dreams and always believe in yourself because you just never know that that success could be just around the corner and if you give up and throw in the towel you'll live your the rest of your life in regret so i guess my message today would be love yourself and uh always believe in yourself and never give up on your dreams you know uh, I, I, I think that yeah I think that's so important. What has what has really kept you moving and kept you going? Because in your business, there can be a lot of rejections and that can be really discouraging. Right, yeah, I, I've, uh, I've, I've dealt with quite a bit of rejection over my years in LA and uh, you can't take anything personal, you know? Uh, if you don't get the role there, it's, it wasn't for you, you know? But um, what I realized is that for me, I believe in myself, and I, I think I'm, I have big things coming my way, TV stars. I believe I'm going to star on TV shows and in movies uh, and be a big movie star. So I'm just trying to stay humble and, and remember where I came from and keep working hard. Uh, yeah, my father, he was my best friend. He passed away, unfortunately, about 20 years ago. And we have, Sorry. Oh, that's okay. We have the same name, so I have a lot to live up to for him, too, so... Yeah, there's no other, I don't have any plan B. My, people have said maybe I should get my real estate license or sell insurance or get a trade like carpentry or plumbing or something like that. But yeah, I don't really have a plan B. I'm just going to stick with my plan A, which is acting. So yeah. You're focused. Yeah. You're staying focused and following your passion. Very confident too. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you end up in Los Angeles? I mean, versus say New York. I mean, you went to... Milan and Paris, and you well, I knew. I lived in New York City for about four years, and I was uh, taking acting classes there and doing some theater there. And um, I just realized there's more opportunity, more film and television opportunity in LA versus New York. But now it seems there's quite a bit of film and TV being shot in New York City too. I, uh -huh. just, uh, I think I've made a lot of great connections in LA and a lot of networking resources. So I'm, I'm very happy here. I mean. The weather, the beaches, all the yes. opportunities. So, you're not going to hear. Yes. Anything. Yes. Well, I I am just so excited about the things that you have accomplished so far and what you have coming up. I cannot wait to see some of the other roles that you have. Yes. Um, definitely, especially when they parallel some of the things that I've already done because I, I get excited about that kind of stuff. So I also want to thank you for the message that you've shared with the viewers today because what you have said is so important and we really need to stay focused and we really, we really need to take the words that you've shared with the viewers today to heart. And, um, I know that you're a busy man. So thank you for taking your time for, to be on the show today. And I want to invite you back. Oh, most definitely. I, I, the opportunity. I understand how busy you are. So I, I very much appreciate your time. And again, thank you for your, your words to the viewers. So, um, and again, I wish you much success. And I also want to thank you, the viewers today, for taking your time out to get to know Baker Holleran. He's uh, got a lot of things that are going to be coming out to not only entertain, but inspire you. So you definitely want to stay on track and follow him. He's got some really cool photos on Instagram. You've got to check them out. Thank you. Yeah, you can find that um, at, it's at my name, at Baker Halloran, so it's easy. Yeah. And if you don't remember it for whatever reason, <laughs> it'll be, <laughs> the link will be uh, connected to the article that is uh, with this show. You'll find more information there. And you'll definitely want to share the information with your friends co-workers, family, and other social media contacts. Get his name out there and 
and follow him. You definitely got to because he's definitely a fun guy and has a, a lot of a lot of talent here. Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Oh, what a show have I got for you today because information about things that are going to help you is really important. That's the goal of my show. I have a guest who's been on before and gave you, the viewer, so much advice. He is president of Brad Williams Financial Service and has over 25 years of addressing financial concerns of retirees and business owners. This is really important because you eventually are going to be a retiree. You may even be a business owner. You may be a small business owner or maybe even think of starting your own business. This is important. You maybe even know somebody in, the, in your family who has a business and you can share the information to them. So he has a strong strong set of communication skills so he can really simplify a lot of things we're going to talk about four major things today on the show that are going to really hit home with you um but not only that but he really listens to his clients you may find and i know i have when i've gone to talk to somebody about finances they're not really listening they're saying here fill out this form Let's see all the things that you've got, and then I'm going to tell you what I think. But you really want somebody who's going to listen to you, because this is your life, right? So we want to talk about those, and we want somebody who's going to explain it to you in everyday language, and really take these complex things, and take these concepts, and give you alternatives, things that are going to make it work for you. What's really neat is I found out his steps to becoming a person of expertise in the financial realm, especially when it came from working, going in FedEx and finding a mentor to get where he's at. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes that's what it takes to change our lives. And he is somebody that's going to offer some advice and mentorship for you today and maybe just maybe you're going to take some of this and allow it to change your life today we're going to talk about some things in well housing we're going to talk about some things in employment or jobs um even in debt or student loans so let's welcome my guest who's been on the show before my oh gosh my perfect advisor here, Brad Williams. Welcome to the show. Oh, well, thank you. Good to be back on. I am delighted because when I was looking at some of the things that were going on with your company and the things that you're doing and the clients that you've been addressing, I'm really super excited. But you've got some things that are really hitting home right now, especially when it comes to real estate and housing. So can we hit on that first? Sure. And, uh, well, I mean, you know, I know in my area, housing's still strong. Um, you know, prices are going up, so it's, that's good. Um, mortgage rates are still at a reasonable yes. level, so there's, you know, there's still a lot of activity there. So, you know, good time to buy a home. Uh, it's a lot tougher to get one now because of 2009, but that's good. It was too easy to get one back then. What scares me is if they continue to loosen them, it, it indicates we might be heading back in the same direction oh interesting so right now it's kind of a buyer's market but it's kind of easy to yeah, maybe it's, you know it's it's easier in respect of you know if you've got reasonable credit money's fairly cheap still uh historically and uh, you know it's it it's a good time because prices are still going up Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, I, it was really interesting because a couple of years ago, I was really starting to be concerned that we were going to be having a market like we did like five or six years ago, and that it was going to be a really, 
it was going to be really tight for a lot of consumers, whether no matter what industry you were looking at. And when we're talking specifically about real estate, I was talking to somebody recently and we were saying, you know, this big scare just hasn't happened yet. Right. We haven't hit a bubble. You know, some people say we're going to have a bubble. Um, you know, one thing that happened is after 2009, a lot of home building slowed down and people started just remodeling what they had instead of moving. Now that really crimped the builder's market. So okay. we still don't have the supply we need in homes, which is one of the reasons why the, uh, the prices are going up because we're just not building them fast enough. Um, and oh. you know, there's, the, there's a Darth there. There's a, there's a need. Uh, there's, you know, multifamily homes became real hot. And what I mean by that is apartments, things like that, uh, became good investments again, because that's usually that, that leading edge there, you know? And then once people get in there, they start looking at buying an individual, you know, a personal single family dwelling when they get in better shape. And so we're seeing more and more of that. And, and as the job and employment market strengthens and wage growth continues, then the home becomes a more achievable goal for a family. That's really interesting. And is there a correlation then between the issue with student loan and auto debt? Yeah, now those are going to, those are the real time bombs that are waiting for our economy. And, and, okay. uh, uh, because uh, we just, they are exploding. Student debt is going to be a massive issue, and that needs to be addressed. And I think part of the reason is that parents need to sit down with their children and have an honest discussion about, is college right for you? And if college is right for you, what career field are you going into? Because going to college and getting 50000 in student loans to get a business degree, you know, it just doesn't cut it anymore. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, so often I know when I was going to college, it was a lot cheaper because student loans weren't as prevalent. You know, it's a supply and demand thing. And I, I think the cycle that we've gotten into is that there's this racket going on. You know, the the government jacks up the available student loan money. The tuition gets jacked up by the college and the person standing in the middle is the student. And that's interesting. OK. You know, and then what happens is something like 40 something percent of of kids and, you know, even adults who uh, have student loan never even got their degree. So here you got you picked up student loans and you never finished your degree or you've gone for a degree field that uh, is just not worth taking a student loan for. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, when I was younger, um, I worked during part of my college. Uh, you know, I was yes. fortunate enough my company had a tuition reimbursement plan, and you know, I, I did that. And and uh, I was you just going to go there. Benefits. What's that? I was just going to go there. I wanted to talk about that because you have such an incredible journey. Your story is amazing. Well, I've been blessed, you know, mm -hmm. and I. I was raised by good parents who taught me a work ethic. I mean, I was delivered. My dad did well, but I was delivering papers at 11 years old and working since then. I never asked him for money. I just did it myself. And uh, uh, what probably got me in the financial field is when I was 12 years old, he sat me down and said, uh, when you collect this month from your papers and every month from here on out, you're going to give me $20 a month and uh, I'm going to match it with 20. We're going to put it in this thing called a mutual fund. And so I started doing that. And I remember, I, you know, when I was in uh, sixth grade, I had a math teacher ask me, you know, he, he was bringing up practical math and he had a stock page and he said, can anybody tell me what that is? And I raised my hand and told him. And I, I remember the look on his face. He said, well, Brad, come up here and, and explain some of these numbers to the class. You know, he was thinking he was going to catch me. And then when I answered him, he said, how do you know that? And I reached over and I pointed to the one on the board and I said, because I own that one right there. And oh, he just gave me this funny. look like, oh my, and I was his best friend after that. <laughs> uh -huh. But that was my dad. You know, so often parents aren't given the financial education of their children. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I just was blessed with a father who taught me the important things, work ethic, you know, honesty. And, you know, and that's what I've tried to impart, impart to my children. 
Now, was this the person who gave you this aha moment and became kind of the mentor to you? No, there were there were others. You know, I I remember when I you mentioned my FedEx. You know, I got hired as a clerk at a low low paying job back in the early days of that company, and at that time it was growing so fast, and I worked my way up, and within five years I was managing an aircraft operation at you know twenty seven years old, uh-huh. and I. You know, the experience I got during that phase, uh, my original manager was was kind of my mentor. And then I've had several. I think you don't really have one mentor. Mm-hmm. You are you go to different levels. And, and you know, there's I'm, I've been in martial arts all my life. And there's an old saying in that, when the student's ready, the teacher will come. And so it seems oh. like every time I was ready for another advancement, somebody came into my life and I listened to them. See, that's the key. I listened. To them. Probably yes. the best piece of advice I ever got from any one individual was when I left FedEx and went into this business and, and my mentor, who was the owner of the firm, said, Brad, let me give you a piece of advice. 20 years from now, you want to be able to look back and know that you've had 20 years of experience and not one year of experience 20 times. And that really hit home oh, because it wow. told me that I constantly have to be expanding my knowledge and 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 push in the limits of what I can do. Yes. You know, I brought that up because I really want the viewers to be able to be inspired and know that when they're talking, when they see a guest talking here on the show, that you have hard work to get where you're at. And by doing so and being consistently looking, keeping that vision and moving right. for it and reaching for it, you can get there. And I, I wanted to bring that up because now you're an expert in your field and you mentor other people. You offer classes. I mean, you'll see it when you go to the website, you're there, you're, you're coaching, you're teaching and you're breaking this down so that people don't feel like they are beneath you. And this is really crucial because oftentimes people will go to an advisor and they leave there more confused than when they went there. They're like, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to get this mutual fund and everything's going to be good to go. And they get there and this person goes, okay, we, we've got an IRA, we've got a mutual fund and we can do this and this and this. And all of a sudden they, they're just kind of like, what? And then they, the person, they fill out this paperwork. I know because I was one of them. And you fill out all this paperwork with all of your, you know, all of your finances. And they say, okay, we're going to call you. And we're going to give you these options. And all of a sudden they go, well, you can't do anything because you really don't have any extra money. And you're thinking, well, that's why I came to you. Because I want to get to the point where I have extra money. So tell me what I need to do. And you're still confused. But give me a starting point. Give me something. And I know you do that. And that's why I want the viewers to be able to connect with you. That's well, even, what I even that's my goal. Yeah, you know, sometimes um, folks will come see me and and, you know, I, say, I ask them a few questions. I realize they, they really don't have much to, there's not really much I can help them with at this point in time. So, but because I gave them an hour and I promise them an hour, I make the good use of it. I say, okay, this is where you are. And if this is where you're going to be, these are the kind of steps you need to take to get there. And so, you know, I, I just feel that uh, there's four laws of the universe that I think are important. And I got this from somebody a long time ago. And there's perseverance. The law of perseverance, the law of use, the law of responsibility, and the law of reciprocity. So, Mm -hmm. like you mentioned, law of perseverance. Oftentimes, a battle is won or a business is successful, not because of all that hard work, but because something that happened right at the edge, where if you had quit, you would have, all that hard work would have gone to waste. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong, it's the hard work, but you got to that point. Yes. So, be you got to persevere and then use, you know, God, God gives us talents. And if we don't use them, he'll just take them away and give them to somebody else. And so, you know, if you've given talents and abilities, you need to use them and hone them. And then responsibility, you know, for my clients, for example, they come to me, they trust me. I'm responsible for them or to them because they've given me that trust. I have got to earn that trust every day. And most mm-hmm. importantly, and this kind of ties them all together as a law of reciprocity, and that is the seeds you sow 
will come back to you. They may not come back to you the way you think or from the place you think they will, but they'll come back because, you know, the laws of the universe and God and all, it's about plenty. And if you're open to that and you're willing to give that, it's the giving that you get. If you don't give, you're not going to get. That's scarcity. Yes, yes, yes. This is so true. And you've made some very key points here. And what I really like, too, is that you're giving somebody, even if you say, I can't help you at this time, you're saying, here's a game plan. You're not right. leaving somebody empty-handed. And this is, this is important because from what I understand, Brad, you have a family business now, and your wife, was very successful with Mary Kay, and now she's in right. the business. Can you tell me about this too? Because the reason I bring this up is because anybody can become successful and different directions can lead them to bigger successes. Right. You so know, it's often I mean, stepping I, stones. I really, yeah. You know, it's like you, you get to a, a point, you're at a success, and then you push yourself to another level and you reach another level of success. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, I, I remember my mom, you know, my parents were great. They, she used to read us on trips and there was this old new age book called Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And I remember she read that yeah. piece, and that was about pushing yourself past the limits. Each time you get to that limit, you get there and then you go even farther. And, you know, some of the best advice she gave me when I'd, I'd come home as a kid and I'd say, you know, I got this to do and I'm not sure I can do it. And, you know, I don't think I can do that. And she used to tell me, well, Brad can't never could do anything. And, you know, just say, what's the worst that can happen? You fail and you learn and then you get up. So, you know, it's like that old adage. It's not how many times that you fall down. It's how many times you get up. You know, I've had I failures in my business, but you just go, OK. What can I take from this? Where where did this lead me, and how do I avoid that in the future? Mm -hmm. When I when I coach people or mentor them, I always tell them there's no failure in this, as long as as soon as you realize it, you just start doing what you need to do to get back on track, because you're not failing. You're starting over. You're just moving forward. Yeah, the when you look at some of the you just like completely, you know, you, you give up, and never do anything with it. Period. There's no you know, it's funny, I have, a, I have a client who works for a 3M company, and he corrects me. I used to say, sticky notes. You know, sticky notes were a failure. The glue that was on that was supposed to be a permanent glue, and then somebody figured out that they, they could use it. Now, he always corrects me. He said, no, that's post-it notes. Sticky notes is the other guy. <laughs> so, but, but when you look at it, at, at, um, oftentimes, failures are what lead you to success, and you know, it's like um, Edison, you know, he said, I didn't fail. I just figured out 15,000 times what didn't work. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's getting up and keeping at it. Yes, yes. There's a very famous celebrity, and I'm not going to go into it now. But one of the things that I learned recently was that he went to something like 214 auditions before he was discovered, and then he hit it big. But, you know, if you, you give up after the first one or, I mean, so anyway, this is, this is really good information, but I want to get back to some of the information that you want to share with the viewers because you have some crucial information that you want to get across and I want to give it to them um, because, you, I mean, you're, you're just really hitting it home. And this year you guys are doing phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's been a good year so far. And, and you know, I attribute that to the economy in some respects, but because I work with retirees, there's a lot more people that are feeling more comfortable about retiring. And, and that's probably a, a uh, you know, uh, one of the reasons why my business has increased this year so far is mm -hmm. that they're saying, okay, you know, I've saved all this and, and I feel comfortable that maybe I can make it last. So how do I do that? And that's, that's where I come in. That's, that's really good. It, and you know, retirees, Correct me if I'm wrong, but are on a fixed income. And so yeah. being on a fixed income, you're kind of looking at, well, okay, so this is what I have coming in, and I know this is what I have going out. So how do I expand my abilities to increase my net worth or whatever? And you're able to do that. 
Well, one of the things I do is you mentioned about teaching and all. I got a big glass dry erase board. Most of my time when I'm spending in front of clients is standing in front of that board and showing them visuals of what I'm talking about so that they mm -hmm. carry it away in their brain. And I draw a mountain and I draw a little mountain climber on it. And on one side, you've got the accumulation side. And on the other side, you've got the distribution side. And your financial okay. life is almost like climbing a mountain. You know, as you're working, you're accumulating, you're climbing the mountain, and then you get to that peak, and then you start heading down, and that's the distribution phase of your life. And the majority of all in incidents, accidents, and deaths in mountain climbing don't occur on the ascent. They occur on the descent. You know, they're okay. tired, their equipment's worn out. You know, they focus so much on getting to the summit that they forgot that they also have to get down. And retirees are the same way. They need to remember that they need to make their money last and they can't invest at 65, 70, and 75 like they did at 40. And right. too many financial advisors don't even understand that. So they can't lead them if they don't understand that. And that's why I think there's, there's, the, there's two distinct types of advisors, accumulation advisors and distribution advisors. And no matter okay. what relationship somebody has with their advisor, they need to know up front, okay, is this the Sherpa that's going to lead me up and then I need to find another one down? Because most likely they can't take you both ways. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. What about somebody who has to have had taken an early retirement? You know, they're they, you know, in their 40s or 50s or something like that. Is there still a way that they can invest? Well, yeah, there is. A, you know, if obviously if they've retired that young, they have accumulated assets, and they just need to make sure that they balance their um, their investment strategies to generate income and focus as much on income as they do growth. You know, in the 40s and 50s, and then as you focus as you as you move into the 60s and 70s, the focus becomes more on income than on growth because growth can be elusive. You know, 2000 okay. to 2003. We saw a 50 percent drop 2007 to 9 60 percent drop so if and and then it took till 2013 for it to come back so that's 13 years of of no growth so that's huge. retirees need to focus different because if you're 40 you got time if you're 65 70 you don't okay that makes a lot of sense and like you said there's going to people there's people out there that really don't understand that and that's right if, they're not understanding that they can't provide the education that's necessary to lead somebody in a direction that's really going to assist them properly. And this is important because when you're in a position where you're at a fixed income and you need to get the right direction, especially, I mean, if you think about it, when you're employed, you go to human resources, sometimes we'll have somebody that comes in, they guide you about your 403B or your 401K, and you know, you, you get, you have guidance, right? And right. so you're kind of good to go, but when you're a retiree, you're kind of out there on your own trying to figure it out. So I like what you're doing and the fact that you're knowledgeable about these things and you're guiding people in the right direction for somebody to make an educated decision about what they're going to do for their future is huge. And knowing that you can do that for them is absolutely essential. Tell me, do you, since you're, you're in Alabama, right? Yes. So do you have online classes that you're able to teach for people around the country? I have videos um, that I can show. They're, they're fairly short um, that explain some of the concepts I use in my planning that, uh, you know, they can access from my website um, or at least send, a, send me an email and I'll be happy to send them to them. I found a lot of comments from them. people say, you know, that really distills things down to it, something that I understand because you know, so often you go into a financial advisor and he starts throwing all this, you know, industry jargon at you and P and E's and this and that. And you're like, what, what's he talking about? And you walk out of there, like you said earlier in the conversation, more confused than when you went in. If you don't walk out of there knowing you learned something or at least knowing that you need to learn something and what it is, then, you know, maybe that was wasted time. Yeah, and it's frustrating. I mean, you leave there frustrating. I mean, I, it kind of seems to me if you're already concerned about your finances and you go to somebody and then 
you leave there more frustrated. You almost kind of, you don't know what to do, but right. you have, you have a book on your website. Do you do one-on-one -on -one consultations by phone, by video? If say, you know, uh, uh, yes, I do. I do go to meetings. In fact, I'm, I'm working with a gentleman in Oklahoma right now, uh, another one in Mississippi um, that have come to me through my website and I'm able to, because I can operate just about anywhere in the country, uh, I'm getting more, I guess with technology, it's kind of funny if you had asked me 10 years ago, if I would pick up a client over the computer, I, I laugh, I would have laughed. And now it's like fairly common. Right. I know. And I just wanted to make sure that my viewers know that they, that you're accessible. And I have an article that will accompany um, our episode today um, about more in depth things than what we talked about today, along with links to your website, um, information, a little bit about your background. Cause I think that it's important that people realize that I mean, you worked from the ground up to get where you're at, and you know you're you are an expert in this field. I mean, you 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 started from scratch, and here you are. You know, and it's real. So, um, so I'm going to do that. And you've left the viewers with a ton of information that I think is crucial for them, and it's connecting them to you. And I love that, Brad. I absolutely Thank love you. it. Yes, and I, you know, I, whether somebody, whether somebody uses me or not, you know, I, I'm a friend of mine uh, or one of my mentors in the past said something that was really profound to me. He lived out west, so he was in the desert, and he said, you know, he believes in the law of the desert, and that is, if you know where the water is, share it. And I thought, well, that's profound because sometimes you don't need to worry what somebody can do for you. You need to worry about what you can do for them. And whether it comes back from them or not, it's a law of reciprocity. You know, it'll come back. That's how I feel too. And so my passion is helping people. And whether it's something direct that I've learned and experienced or like sharing information for, that you have, um, it's getting it in the hands of someone else and maybe they can get it to somebody else. And I, I just, I have a passion for that. And I love, I love that. And yes, I, I think that, how it comes back to us, I don't know, but it does, because I believe, like you, this is a giving. Giving information, sharing, helping people grow. This is a passion for me. I know it is for you, and that's why I'm so glad to have you back as a guest. And I want you to share with the viewers your information on how they can connect with you today, even though I've got it in an article that will be with this episode. Please, 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 please share it with the, uh, with the viewers. Well... I make it pretty simple. If you've got a financial question, just ask bradwilliams.com. Ask bradwilliams.com. There you have it. You can connect with him in all sorts of ways. He's on all over. If you, if you just Google, or I don't even know if you want to say that anymore, Yahoo search or Bing search or any kind of search engine that you have, and it's ask Brad Williams, or you type in Brad Williams Financial Services, you're going to find him on Facebook. You're going to find his links. You're going to find it in our show links. You know, the you, he's everywhere. But I will just share with you the passion that he has, and that's helping. So right. know that you can connect with him with not, with not any expectation. And that is important because you can feel good about asking and getting the right answers. Thanks for watching today. And I want to thank you, Brad, for again being a guest on the show. I am so glad to have you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I enjoy being here.